name is Lyra. She's a chocolate lab and she was trained by an amazing group called Topaz Assistance Dogs out in Naples, Florida um, to be a hearing alert dog. She is actually dual trained. She's a hearing alert dog and she is also a trained facility dog. So my other job of being a speech therapist, she comes to work with me and she works with the kids with autism um, at our clinic. But her main role is my uh, hearing alert dog. She can do some pretty cool things. She'll alert me to my phone ringing. She can tell me when there's an emergency vehicle coming by. Um, and one of her biggest things that's most important to me is when any here starts to call my name, especially in a crowd at Walt Disney World, I can't hear her. And so when she starts yelling, mom, Lyra knows to come and tap me so that I know that Emmy needs me. Um, and we can show you real quick. She'll probably do it. So, you want to show them? Mom! Mom! Yes! Mommy! Mom! Yes! yes. Mom. Good job! So, this is Lyra, and that's what she'll do. She'll um, nudge me and tap on me until I realize that there's something going on that I need to pay attention to. And so, this is her. <laughs> And that's what she is trained to do. And she really helps out when it's really loud at all the parks. I'm gonna get her to come over here so we can keep talking to you guys. So, all right, what else, Em? Well, now I wanna know what the difference, what, what the difference is between a service dog and a companion animal. So, there's some pretty big differences between service dogs, companion animals, and therapy dogs. Um, service dogs are, trained to perform a task to help an individual. And so they're protected or I'm protected, the person is protected under the Americans with Disabilities Act um, because they define a service dog is a dog that has been individually trained to perform a task on cue that assists a person with a disability. So for me, that's the hearing loss side of things. Um, Lyra is trained specifically to help me with my hearing loss. The other kind of animals might be um, seizure alert dogs, mobility um, dogs. Um, there's a whole wide array of things that dogs can be trained to do. Um, but for me and Lyra, it's that hearing alert side of things. Emotional support animals, on the other hand, are there to help comfort their person, but they are not necessarily trained to perform that task um, that can help somebody with a disability. And then therapy dogs are usually very well-mannered animals, they always are, um, that can go into places like hospitals, schools, nursing homes, um, to help bring some happiness and joy and comfort to people in those kinds of settings. So the thing that really distinguishes a service dog is that they are the ones that are trained to perform a very specific task. Um, and that's the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. Now, what rides can you take your service dog on at Walt Disney World? There are a lot. Um, it's kind of fun, huh, Em? Mm -hmm. I remember we took her on Pirates, right? She did. She rode Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, I've got a list here because there's actually several rides that they can go on, and it's actually easier to name the ones that they cannot go on. So there's a small list. Um, Magic Kingdom, for example, has the Barnstormer. Big Thunder Mountain, Peter Pan's Flight, Seven Doors Mine Train, Space Mountain, and Splash Mountain. So those are the big ones. Everything else, the dogs are welcome to get on. Um, sometimes you need a little more caution, but those are the ones that they cannot do. Same thing at Epcot. It's Mission Space, Soarin', and Test Track that the dogs cannot ride. I can't imagine seeing Lyra like on Test Track, like her tongue's but... <laughs> Um at Hollywood Studios, it's Alien Swirling Saucers, Millennium Falcon, Rock and Roller Coaster, Slinky Dog Dash, Star Tours, Rise of the Resistance, and Tower of Terror. And at Animal Kingdom, uh, there are certain sections at Rafiki's Planet Watch, um, Flight of Passage, Expedition Everest, Dinosaur, the uh, Cali River Rapids, and 
let's see, that looks like about it. So pretty much everywhere else, um, the dogs are able to go um, on the rides, to the shows, all those kinds of things. Um, if they cannot get on the ride, then an important thing to remember is that a cast member at Walt Disney World cannot assume responsibility for your dog at any time. So you have two options. You can either do a rider swap, where one member will stay with the dog and the other person can ride and then you switch out and they can go back. Um, or that at the rides where they can't ride, there are always kennels. Um, sometimes you have to wait for a minute for a supervisor to get there. Um, but once they're there, then you can, in, the person with the disability locks the dog up into the kennel. Somebody stays with the dog at all times, so they're never left alone. Um, and then the dog can be picked up at the exit of the ride. It's pretty quick and easy. That sounds pretty nice to them to stay with the dog and watch them the whole time. It is. What's yeah. next? Number four. Where does your dog um, mm -hmm. eat, drink, or relieve herself? So, with Lyra, for example, she eats um, by earning her food for work. So I carry a pouch with me at all times, and she just eats a little bit throughout the day while we're walking and doing things. I forgot about that. Yep. Um, by wait, for drinking, um, the cast members are very accommodating. We would go to quick service restaurants and ask for a cup of water, and they would bring her a cup of water. Um, or even at some places a little bowl so that she can drink some water pretty easily. Um, so that was never an issue. And then for pet relief areas, um, there are designated spots at every park um, and I've got a list of them, but they also note that your dog is able to relieve itself at any place inside the um, Walt Disney World grounds that they want. You just have to clean up after them um, so there's no shortage of places for them to go to the bathroom easily, um, eat and drink easily. Um, they're very accommodating. I remember the best relief area for Lyra was the one in Star Wars Land. A Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, that one was pretty nice. Yeah. All right, Nims, what you got next? Now, do you still need to get a disability access card to travel the parks with your service animal? So you don't need a disability card. However, I will say it makes things a little bit easier. Um, you are welcome to go in and out of the parks as much as you need with your animal. Um, but if you get the DAS card is what you'll see them often referred to, um, then it helps you not wait in some lines, um, which can be helpful with the dog only because of other cast or other, excuse me, other guests and, um, a lot of the children in line, they often want to pet or distract your dog from working. Um, and it can be for some of those longer rides, a bit of a hassle. Um, so I strongly suggest using the DAS pass when you have a service animal with you, just so that there's not those distractions. Um, and you can get a DAS pass at customer relations at the um, entrance of any of the parks. Um, and just explain to them that it's for use with your service animal and they are very helpful in accommodating with it. Here's Lyra again. <laughs> hey, settled. Yes, good girl. Um, what else then? Now, which Disney hotels allow service animals to stay there? Any of the hotels. Um, that's kind of nice. It is kind of nice. Um, with all service animals, because um, for the individual using them, they're protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act, then that means a service animal can go into any of the resorts um, on property um, at any time. There are four resorts that are piloting a pet-friendly um, program right now. And so if you stay at either Art of Animation, Port Orleans Riverside, Disney's Yacht Club or the cabins at Fort Wilderness, you might run into some dogs that are not service animals. Um, they are allowed at those resorts um, right now. So we did, we stayed recently at Yacht Club and we did see a few times a few other animals that were not service dogs. Um, but a fully trained service dog is welcome at any of the resorts on property. Now, what kind of documentation is required, is required to, to bring your service animal? Mm -hmm. um, so service animals do not require any documentation. Um, 
She is fully trained. I know she's fully trained. She acts fully trained. So there is not any kind of documentation for an actual service animal that is required. That being said, um, it is very responsible and a good idea to always carry your dog's vaccination records with you. So we always do that with Lyra to show in case anyone asks that she is fully vaccinated. But other than that, no documentation needed. Now, what? Now, are service animals limited to dogs or can there be like service cats or service squirrels? Well, at Disney there are service dogs and then your other option is um, miniature horses. Those are the only two animals that are allowed in the parks at Disney World. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. We kind of might need a miniature horse. I don't think so. <laughs> are service animals allowed in restaurants? They are allowed in restaurants. Like I said with the hotels, service animals, service dogs can go anywhere that its owner goes, um, its handler goes. So that includes restaurants. Um, a properly trained service dog does not beg. They don't get fed table scraps. Um, I don't think Lyra's ever tried people food. Uh, she, when we go out to eat, she lays nicely under the table. And most of the time um, when we're out to eat, people around us and the waiters don't even know she's there. And I have another question. Like what if you're eating at a hotel? Like. If you're eating at the Grand Floridian and you're taking her to the cafe, kind of, is she allowed in restaurants at the hotel, like uh, Topolino's? Yep. Anywhere that a handler goes, their service dog goes with them. What rules about allergies or, or considerations of other guests? So yes, that is um, a thing. Because service dogs are protected, they can go anywhere. And I know there are people out there that are allergic to dogs. Um, and that is why service dogs like Lyra, she gets brushed out regularly, she gets bathed regularly, um, and so she is clean and as much as possible allergy free, but that's also another reason why people don't touch working dogs, right? Mm -hmm. Is that 10 questions in? Yep. That was 10 questions. If you guys have any further questions, feel free to reach out to us. I love talking service dogs in Disney World and all things disability access, so feel free to reach out. Um, you can find us on Facebook at Justin Rob Castle Coaches Travel, same with Instagram, and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Oh. Bye! And we still might need a miniature horse.